I will explain exercises from chapter 9. So first I will explain exercise 1 from chapter 9. It's basically about replicating the threshold correlations from figures 9.1 and 9.2. So this exactly talks about this formula here in page, on page 8. What we have to do is construct Z1 and Z2 such that Z1 is lower than or equal than a certain value Z1 at a certain probability and Z2 lower than Z2 at that same probability. So let's look at the Excel to see exactly what they're doing. So here you have on the left hand side the returns for the S&P 500 and the returns for the US 10 year treasury note. Now we're going to have certain quantiles so this is going to be P. That probability P is what we're going to have here. Actually let me copy paste this formula in here to see exactly what they're going to do. So the threshold, how do you define the threshold? So in here you have the percentile of the whole series evaluated at 0.15. This is the, the value, the minus 0 0.01 is the, the value at, with a 15% probability. And this one is the one for the T-note. Then we're going to bring all the returns that comply with being lower than the threshold value for the S&P and the threshold value for the T-note. And then if they're actually lower, then we're going to include this in the time series. If they're not, then we're not going to include them. So here, for example, the two of them are actually lower than that threshold. Once we find the ones that are lower, we find 33 of them and the correlation is 0 0.1697. Then we increase the, the probability, 16%, and now we have 38 returns, 17%, 44 returns, and so on. So we do first the left tail, and then in this, in here, we're going to do the right tail. Here, the conditions are going to change to now not being lower than, but greater than this threshold value. Exercise 9.3 is about building this copula model from returns. The first part says estimate a dynamic volatility model sigma it. What we have to do in our model is we're going to have the sigma t, this variance, for each one of the returns in the S&P, for the S&P return. So in this case we're going to put a risk metrics model and then in the case of the 10 year treasury note we're also going to put a risk matrix model notice that here you can change this volatility to model to any volatility models we could put a garge or an n garge or jgr garge now after that we're going to standardize or the returns we're going to take each log return and standardize it by the volatility we have two return series here that are standardized. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fit a model. So where does that come from? So in, that's in the second part. So first, we're going to estimate a volatility model and standardize. That's what we just did. The second thing is estimate a density model for each asset to get the probabilities. In this case, the exercise is very clear. It says, assume that the marginal distributions have a risk matrix volatility with symmetric T shocks. We have to fit a T distribution. That's the next thing we're going to do. And here, this gamma function and so on and so forth is basically the log likelihood function for the T distribution. And then here, we're going to compute the log likelihood, and it's going to depend on D. This D, do not get confused, we're not yet in the copula part. We're still trying to fit some distribution into these returns. Once we fit a distribution into these returns, so this one is going to be with 8.3 degrees of freedom, and the one from Treasury Note is going to be 14 degrees of freedom, then we're going to get the U's. The U is basically, well, we're going to evaluate in the CDF, cumulative distribution function, each one of these ZIs, and we're going to get the UIs. And this is the U1 we get and the U2. So this U1 corresponds to the standardized return evaluated at a, dis, a t distribution with 8.3 degrees of freedom. Same thing goes for U2, but now this one is going to be with 14.4 degrees of freedom. Next, since the book is telling us that we have to estimate a normal copy model for these two assets, then what we do is we evaluate these probabilities with the normal inverse distribution. So if it was a t distribution, we would use the t 
inverse distribution, but because if it's a normal normal copula, then we're going to use the normal inverse. So realize that we have moved from this standardized return that we say it's t distributed according to this local likelihood into sort of like a normal world. Then when we have these two normal values, then we're going to evaluate the copula model. Here you, you would have the formulas for copula, normal copula. Those are going to be found in slide on slide 22 for the for the normal copula. So this is exactly what we're, we're putting in there. Next, what is the value that we're gonna that we need to find? Is this row star? We're gonna evaluate. We're gonna put exactly that function, and then we're gonna evaluate our copula model with the maximum likelihood estimation. Finally, in exercise 9.4, they ask us to simulate 10,000 returns with the model that we just constructed on exercise 3. And then the idea is to compute the 1% var and the expected shortfall correlation with that model. So we're going to generate our 10,000 returns. And we have 10,000 and we have two series. So these two series are not correlated whatsoever. And then we have our row star. With this row star, we're going to be able to reconstruct our copula Monte Carlo simulation. We created these two data series that are uncorrelated. This is the correlation, this row star, it's minus 0.19. We're going to use the Cholesky decomposition to correlate these two uncorrelated random numbers. If you want more references on that, you can go to chapter 8, pages 12 and 13. Now, in here, you're going to have the Z1 that is going to be the same, but now the Z2, you're going to see it's going to be slightly different. So the correlation be between these two should be very close to the 0 0.19. So let's just double check. And you can see it's not exactly minus 0 0.19, it's minus 0.20, but it's very close to it. So if we change our random numbers, we're going to get closer to the 0.19, but the whole idea is there. So now we have this standardized random numbers and the two of them correlated. These are going to be our Z's that we're going to transform into U's, how we evaluate with the normal distribution. So we're doing everything the other way around. Then after we have that, we have to get our new Z's. So these new Z's are coming from the T distribution. Over the SMP, it has 8.3 degrees of freedom. For the T node, it has 14 degrees of freedom. We convert the two of them. And finally, we're going to use a volatility. So in this case, we're going to use a constant volatility. So we multiply all of them by exactly the same volatility, the same volatility for the SMP and the T node. Finally, we assume we have 0.5 weight for each one of the portfolios. And we construct the portfolio return, just the return times the weight. We get our returns. We rank the 100 largest losses because they ask us the 1% value at risk. And then we get the 1% VAR and the 1% expected short. Thanks for watching.